All right, so after what I believe was the vertex descriptor use uh, change, I need to take another side jaunt because what's happening is I'm growing a little concerned about the fact that I'm getting a lot more and more YAML files, individual YAML files, just slowly like, and if I carry on this trajectory, they're going to explode into a multitude of like subdirectories and all that stuff. And I'm thinking maybe, maybe not quite this at this level. I mean, for some, maybe like images or something like if I have a bunch of like one line YAML files flying about that, then that, that's kind of not great at all. So what I want to do is I'm going to have to start like putting them into one larger file, still text, still YAML for the editor side, at least so I, that it can be easily compressed on source control. So I can basically still use Git with it. And then of course, like you would import that into the editor and then export it out to a binary format, which would be much more compressed for the final use. But, so I'm gonna need something that's like a larger YAML file, but to go back to ECS, I have groups like for entity groups, which is like the basis of like how I want to group uh, data, used data later. So like, of course you'd have like the base game, like, um, yeah, you'd have like the base game, which would be like group zero, and then group one would be a DLC, a group two would be a mod, a group three would be another mod that call back to whatever. And for that to work, I need to be able to do dependency. So like if I have, okay, let's just open up a YAML, uh, the data.yaml. Uh, like if I have, you know, uh, okay, I'm gonna use letters. A, like I have the base game, A. And then I have like a B, which depends on A. And then maybe like I have C, which depends on B. So like, it would go A to B to C, or maybe if I have a D which depends on B and a E that depends on A or something like this, something like this, or even like a F which just depends on both, what? Depends on B and E or something like that. So you have like diamond inheritance as well or something like that. Dependency. Anyways, the idea is I need like some dependency system for between the groups. So that like if you have so that the group that you're working on, well it's like a subgroup that's way down the tree, a DLC, and that depends everything that you need to load that exact same state, you can determine whether or not you have the right dependencies and that they're in the right order or something like that. <clears throat> okay. So, um, like what we're going to do is the data A, the data B dot YAML. I'll fix something like that. And we'll have like this being the, the root one would have no, no dependent. C would have nothing. B would have dependencies actually. That'd be like a list. I think a list. I think a list will work. Or yeah, so it'd be like list, which is like the name and the group ID. Which would have to be, the group IDs would have to be, have to have like an interface or translation. Because if a subgroup, if a, if a group I depend on is in a different numbered position, I'm gonna to have to translate entities of this group into that other one. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and then this would also apply actually to the final save files. Like the save files will have like this list of 
of game datas and whatever that it depends it on to that it was saved from, I suppose. Uh, so the data A. And we'll say it start had group zero. And group this. Both this would have transitive name the data B with um and it would also like depend on name data A. Actually no, because yeah, group ID zero zero and this would be zero one. And then I was zero two. I need to have because if I have any data A saved, I need to have their group ID as well. But still, these can be shifted around. As long as the as long as A is before is loaded before B, because B is, depends on A. As long as they're in the same order here. Ah, <sighs> you know what? I'll make my life a little easier. Let's just say it just does indeed depend on the data B. And then the data A. Um, okay, whatever. <laughs> Let's focus on the simple case. We have one depend we have a no dependency and one dependency and then a transitive dependency. Let's focus on this. So I'm just going to close up all of this right now, and I'm going to start in the application. Um, hmm. I'm going to have a little thing at the end of the initialization that I'm going to work with. Or actually, no, it'll just be part of the main. Right about here. Nope, initialize. Here. You know what? Actually, I will just do that. I'll put a namespace right up here. Empty one. Ah, uh, okay. Thanks. It'll be like load state data. Yes. Uh, the file name. Like that, and this would be like what? Yaml dot h. Amazing. Hmm. Okay, let's change it to string. For oh, God's sakes. Since that's probably what the, the only thing that it supports in, is anyway for the moment. We'll just start with a very, very basic uh, thing where we load the file, and file. So, oh no, I can probably, probably. If I have an IF, oh yeah, 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 no. This is the slowest start to anything ever. Whatever. Standard IF stream in file is state data file. Standard stream in. Not in the file. And we're going to like um, just abort. I don't even want to bother. Oh, 
catch whatever. I'm not gonna care. YAML load from the file I have, which is the in file. Okay. Um, then what we're going to have to do is we are going to have to grab the dependencies, which will be if they exist, they have to exist. If, okay. Node equal root node for dependencies node. Else, we'll do a standard abort here as well. They should always have one. If it's like this, then that means Um, okay, what if what if this okay, simplify it's only returning okay, we need a struct struct boys uh, group data import state data dependencies name the where you can where this file can be found For group ID, which is the group. Okay, um, yeah, okay, come on. please tell me that works. You're not going to tell me like I don't actually have. Do I just not include it because I'm not using it? I guess. Well, too late. I, I'm using it now. C D E F yeah. Okay. Okay, what we're going to, uh, we're returning a standard vector of the dependencies, state data dependencies for load state data dependencies. This, the only thing that this function does is it opens a file, reads its dependencies, and buggers, out, buggers right back out. So, need this. Do this, otherwise, return. I need an, I need to hmm. I really do need a okay I'm not even going to bother with uh, doing error checking right now I just need to get the basic concepts going okay so I'm on the dependencies node I gotta go for auto trader equals node dot begin the depth node. Uh, 
going to go through each of them. Um, then we'll have uh, state dependent data dependencies. New dependency. We'll try this. We'll catch it. With a standard abort. Right now. Where, okay, this iterator will have new dependency. Uh, actually, I could just put this together, can't I? Where the dot name equals iterator name. Dot file is unknown. We can't quite find it yet. The group equals um, do I don't even have a way to read ECS from YAML yet. Okay, we'll just say it's a it's a, just a number right now. So we'll just say iterator And then we add it to the dependencies. Okay. And we'll just call this super simple auto attempt equals that. We'll start with the data B. Run it. Classic. Dev node. Um, okay, what is this? This is an iterator. So, okay. Not the point to the value of, that the iterator is containing. And I, oh, oh, I need to do dot as string as um, unsigned int, I think. Well, I have to. Of course, this also means I also need like to do get index in uh, generator information as well. Uh, I have the import and export state stuff here. So it's not too bad. I just need to take this and convert it. Okay, I'm here. F10. Uh, F5. Let's see what we got, what we got, what we got. Ah, good. There's no data file for nothing. Oh. Oh, actually, nice. It didn't even... Uh... Oh, yeah, I did abort correctly. Save it, save it. Actually, just ship these guys over. Ha ha. We'll do it. We have one, the data, which has no file. We have the group. Okay.
Hmm. Okay. And let's say D takes in both B and C since they are separate. So Two. We've got the data C and the data B on that group and that group. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. We have the, okay, let's do um, Okay, I need to import include any of the group stuff. So what was it? Groups, HPP. Because this is something that's going to be quite integral to the state data management. So this will be like the top level I'm loading in and then everything else goes deeper within. So I'm going to say like bool um, load state data. This is the top level. State data. Okay. We got that. We start. Do that now. I need to set up group translations, right? Or hmm, maybe I should do this recursively. I only have the top level. I'm sorry, I'm just <laughs> I'm just trying to think of a whole bunch of scenarios right now in my mind and I'm having trouble trying to keep it all in my mind and grasping it all.
Okay, let's say, okay, we have, we have this. Then we're going to do, going to go on a bunch of checks. We need to make sure that dependencies are sorted before we can do, we bother with anything else. So check. Check that dependencies are valid. Um, no duplicates. Inner iterator dependencies. Oh no, I can't. I gotta make sure. Yeah, no. And then inside of here, inner iter. Iterator equals dependencies. No, it'll equal iterator plus one. Dependencies dot end. Iterator iter. If the inner Iterator name, iterator name, then I need to go return I need an error code. Turn that. We need like a success case as well. Okay. Um, change that track. We need to what? Find all the files. We need to find all the dependent files. In this case, it'll just be like the name plus YAML for the moment. So, standard file system exists or something like that. Exists. 
Checks whether a path exists. Where is this from? Standard file system. Oh, just standard file system exists. And what's just a bool? Yeah. Dependency not found. Okay, it looks like Clang D decided the crap out. Classic. Right now we'll just keep it all there. I have the search paths thing from a couple uh, from a while ago that this will hook into, but for now, basics, basics. Uh, and then, well, the, for not so basic, check transitive dependencies. Iterator. Because what I would need to do transitive. All right. I need to go up. Dependency iterator. Okay. Hmm. Through the dependencies, that's good. Transitive dependencies for, will equal load state dependencies from the file that we have, which is iterator.file or dependency dependency iterator. Okay. Okay, no, I do need to. Plus plus dependency. This can be that straight up. I don't need the iterator for this one, do I? Starts false. Check iterator. go to check iterator is not equal to the current dependency that we're on dependency because we can only go up to up to the guy I'm looking at if he's beyond the guy I'm looking at if he's loaded afterwards then we're going to hit a bit of a bit of a problem there equals dependency iterator that's what check iterator
check iterator. Uh, name. Then dependency found equals true. We need to break out. Route if not dep found. Then I need to say return transitive dependency not found. Okay. I'd also need to make sure that they're they are in the right order, wouldn't I? Ooh, okay. So let's restart this so I can get uh, my thing back. Hmm. Because right now I'm just making sure that they're before. I'm not checking if they're in the right order. I'm pretty sure. You know what? Actually, I should probably test this. So <clears throat> let's say the data D. Okay. He's A, he's B. C. D is expecting B and C. And let's say E is expecting it, but in the other, in the opposite order. Uh, C and B. For whatever reason, that's how it was loaded. So if I was to Okay, we do this. So we the data D should work fine. B and C, and then the other one will also work. Fine, right? Transitive dependency not found. Okay. Okay. I was wrong. I was very wrong. I don't have the data A. The top level guy doesn't have A. Yeah. Okay. So let's say we have, we're not going to load that. We're going to load. The D. Yes, hilarious. Um, the data A.
Hey, at least I actually know that's working as well. The transitive is kind of catching stuff. Because in order to load B or C, you'd need data A anyways. So if you're to load D the first time, you still need all three of these guys. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Go to there. Success. Okay. And if we were to do the same thing with E, with the opposite ordering, we're going to fail. Or we're still going to success. So we're going to successfully fail or fail to success. Uh, transitive dependency not found. Huh? Interesting. The data A, the data B, C, the data B. Sorry, which one? Which? So we've got the data B. I'm presuming this is C, right? Oh, yeah, that's right. C depends on B, and it couldn't find it. Well, that, that's actually working pretty nicely. Um, cute. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. He's expecting B. And in their dependencies, data A to B, the data C, the data A. C expects B to befo be before it. Huh. Okay. Let's see. We have CBA. Let's let's swap this around. We have C. No. Wow. Okay. I'm. <laughs> How do I test this? I need two at the same level. So we're going to have a B two, B A or C. Okay, C and C two. Because if they're actually in a hierarchy, then they'll always work. Well, what I need is a D that has this as well. C. Like that. He also, so C and C2, same thing. And E is expecting this. And this. As long as this group IDs are different, I don't really care. I do not care. Who am I? I'm data E. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Fuck it. Fuck it. I'll come back to this. And probably never. Whatever. We have successful dependency ordering, transitive dependency detection. I need to make sure that they're in the right order. Um. I need two at the same level, A and B and B and A. Or C and C2. Okay. Um, damn it. Oh, I shouldn't have deleted that. What's it, 9.30? Okay. Okay. B is also at the very top. That's great. A and B are same level, root level. It's fantastic. 
He's expecting these to be in this order. And he's expecting it to be in the other way. Where it's, uh, it's B and A and A and B. Okay. Then we have D. He brings in D. A, B, C, D. A, B, C. As we bring in E. We're still bringing in E, right? Success. And if I was to do the same, add uh, this guy in. So this guy should fail, or will have to fail in a moment. But he'll succeed. All right. Now I need to do this ordering thing. I mean, they're still both before D, which is correct, but I want to make sure that they're the correct order. This would be very particular. Very particular. Let's grab another album of what is this? Do that. That's nice. <clears throat> A, B, C, D. We want to. Okay. So the check iterator. Dot begin. As we roll through, so what will happen? First of all, this one will work. Because C is going to call it. No, this one will not work. This one should not work because they're in the wrong, wrong order for him. Ooh. But D would work. Success. Okay. <sighs> D. And then if we add C on top of that. I'm going to need really descriptive error messages for this nonsense, this ordering nonsense. Okay, um, let's, let's just do prolog uh, general error. Hmm. 
Okay. Of dependency that out of dependency iterator name. Interesting. I don't. Oh, the, the logging is not initialized until afterwards. Whoops, diddly doodly. Let's, put, let's do this in the other order. Ah. Uh... So then after this, what would have to happen after this? I have all the top level dependencies, I have their files, I have their group IDs. Okay, uh, with this, then I'd have to start, um, yeah, okay. You set up the entity groups with, uh, I need to pass this in. through these. Uh, 
Um, how did I do this? Was it like through pointers? Unique pointers. And I generated them how exactly? Hmm. in here the name what's the name the name is the name of the group okay so I'll be able to re-extract that later and then so iterator dot name and I need to shift it to the group ID right from the plain zero one and whatever Normalize the group ID of it dot group. So this would be when I'm putting me on the group, when I add the group, when I add the group, I am checking for Things duplicate names. Yeah. And then ID would improve. Or increment, I should say. Uh, I still have an extra one, don't I? The C one. The rest of them are all null point. Wait, there's only like 13 of these things? How many groups can I have? Max general groups. 15. Uh, number of... Um... Oh, I only have 16 groups. Minus two. Okay. Uh, 
Um, I'm sorry. How many group bits do I have? Four. That should give you 16. Zero to, fi zero to 15. So that's 16 values. The max value is 15. So honestly, persistent, oh no, temporary is the f value of 15. That's 14. That leaves 0 to 13. Right? 0 to 13. Ah! Zero to thirteen, which means there's fourteen of these values. Okay, uh, fix that up real quick. Um, come on, get out of here, out of here. I want to thank you. Starting at zero. One too many. Okay. Uh, Okay, uh, back to what I was doing. Back to what I was doing. Here, uh, entity groups. Okay. Then at this point, I would import dependency in dice data. And then the entity state data. In dice data, state data. Um, index data, state data, hmm, hmm, Okay, um, I do need to do some stuff with ECS. I need to have a library for loading and stuff. Whatever. Oh, yes. Yaml.
export and have this. And I want the same thing for the index and the group ID. In fact, I don't even want entity ID. I just want the index and the uh, group ID. Sources. Okay, um, there's nothing in here yet. I mean, that's just an unsigned in, so.
uh, we'd convert this Okay, and then for the other, we just have to a YAML node, which is a two string of, do I have two strings for this? I do not. Hmm. Okay, if I can write it out as, what is it? If I just return it as a bad, as the UN32, then I can actually expand it in the future without any issue. It does make sense, yes. Okay, we have this. Let's see if we can backport it to this thing. Because right now I have name equals this, group ID equals that. Okay, we can get YAML from these other these transitively anyways. So not much of a problem there. Uh, was it group ID? Hmm. 
And what does it read as, hmm? I mean, yeah, okay, that does actually make sense. And what's this one? Five, something, or whatever. Okay. Do I want to normalize it when I'm sending it to that? Not really. I'm actually just going to get rid of that and I'm going to back this up. I'm going to just do this. Keep it like that. Keep it as an unsigned int. I can just do easy translations here rather than doing shifting all the time when going to and from a file. Because I've got to change it anyways when I'm putting it into this. Okay, <clears throat> well, I still want the index ID ones. That'll make sense, right? Mm, not really, it's still the unsigned int, isn't it? I guess. Okay, this was a point, this was a pointless exercise actually. Uh, but it won't be for the index generator. Because I do need the, was it this import and export state? Next index and recycled indices. I can do that still. So let's do that. to exist before I do anything with it. Awesome.
Okay, we're reading it in. We'll have two things. We have a foe, entity, ID, next, next index. I do have an index ID type. Okay. Otherwise, it starts off at a zero. No, no, you always have it. Always have it when you're reading it. Always. It, it's required. Whoa, whoa, what am I doing up here? otherwise Okay. First of all, let's try to reserve a size. Yep. 
then we do go ahead and we place it back, which is I'm really not on board with this entity ID thing right now then. I'll just remove it from that. Okay, I'll delete the files later. Actually, I just do it now. But the fact it takes a little while. Still going. And there we are. Okay. Uh, was back here. So I'm if um, throw. Am I even? I mean, yeah, it's void actually, wouldn't it? I mean, if there's an er error, it just throws an exception. Otherwise, oh, um, yes, I should also probably <laughs> uh, index generator import state which is the next index and the recycled indices okay uh, for going out
<laughs> okay. Oh yeah, because that's gone now. Uh, but I'll take index generator. Thank you very much. Hmm. Load the state data, load the entity groups, then I want to load the index information for the top level. Um, which means what? Not the ten, well, for the permanent ones. Yeah. data I need to reopen the file at this point I did have, uh, no, I don't, it's up here. Split it out later. General error.
Yeah, just that standard abort. For the moment. Or return. Do I even want error codes if I'm already spitting back out all these other things? Because I only really need true and false now. Hmm. It's a boolean. And at this point, we'd have like the actual state data, which would then become whatever all these files are. Now that I'm thinking about it, an hour, 40 minutes in. I'm back to where I began, of course. Need to import state data which would start at like all of the dependencies below, working my way up to the current one. Guitar, hmm. Would I want the dependency index info? No, I don't want to. If you're modifying state data, you're only modifying the current one that you have open, not any of the others. They're just loaded so that you have the background information. Or for you to modify them. But you can't add or remove. Well, you can add, but you can't. Oh, can you remove? You can't add or remove. You can remove components, but you can't remove the entity itself. It'll just be like a blank um, thing, a blank entity, an empty ent entity after that. So yeah, I have to go through four. Oh. Uh, I'd have to go through the dependencies one by one in the order I already have from the top level. So yeah. And then I import the current one. Okay, how would this work? We'll import the state data. We have the file, the entity groups, The group ID, the target and the target group ID, which will be like P entity groups, get group of, or no, we'd already have it, wouldn't we? It'd be like, right? I would have set it up here. IT.name, IT.group.
Okay. Hmm. Right now, it's a normalized value. So yeah, it actually, just do this. And get the name. Which we must have. We have the group ID. The groups, that way we can tr make translation information. The group ID I'm targeting. And then I'd have like uh, data pools and resource pools, which I don't even have really here yet. So I'll just create these as void star. And similarly here, it'd be just a file that we already have, or state data file, right? It'd be a file path. Into the groups, persistent group, group ID. Moving up here to be like, or it would be a Boolean anyways. So the file path, uh, this, things which I don't have yet, but I will. Um, we open and read the data file, which we must have somewhere. State data and resource data is separate or not yet. I don't know. I need to translate, I need to translate. That's the thing I was gonna do.
opening and closing the file several times. I mean, what? It's only like a few times, really. I'm not going to really, really be too bothered about it. Because it'll be like two to three times per file, and then we'll have this massive low chunk loading of state data, which will be, mm, you know, God knows how, how much. As long, I'd rather be more correct than try to save a few file openings and closings. And that's how I will justify it to myself. I need a group translation struct. Could be like what? Uh, just group ID. confirmed earlier that the dependency, the transient dependencies are satisfied and in order before we even bothered trying to load the data here really quickly. I got all that out of the way first. So that would mean, um, and I know I have them. Group translation, new, okay, so I need to We're just using it as a getter type thing. const version of the uh, that right because it's it is constable it's not like if I get if I get group 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 mm, generate oh wrong one groups no I'm not going for name is indeed that it is constable. I can const this, so I'll, I'll add a second one which is const. versions of all of them I'm not even going to be bothered am I yes I am damn it no I'm not this is pointless just say it's not const okay god damn it
Um, let's come into here and see. I actually just bypassed it entirely, so that's cool. That that's cool. Um, let's see where it fails. Was it here on setting up the entity groups? This P entity groups has a couple groups sitting at zero, two, and three. It's now 14 of these, 14, 15, 16, just starting at zero. Yes, correct. Wait, hold on. Zero to the 13 is 14. And then I have 14 and 15. Okay, yes. Just flashback that earlier nonsense uh, this is good this is okay I don't have in dice data right now <gasps> oh yes that's entirely true uh, for what e right now is the one I'm loading primarily e so we'll just say we have you know in what was it we'll call it index data But we'll say next index is 14. Is it in recyclable indice indices? Oh, I okay. Um, Entity groups, uh, persistent group is the one star of that. I have to throw all this in a try and catch as well. But cycled in ICs two and ten. Hmm? Let's see. And I gotta implement tests for these as well, of course. Offline. Recycled indices two and ten. Next is fourteen. That's that group. Okay, great. Okay, so file dependencies we have none here. So and we're not returning anything. We should return true. So the data A and the data B, whoops. Uh, data B is one, data A is zero, but on my thing, what I have in memory is data A is at zero and data B is like at two instead. So translation list should be slightly different. A, zero, zero, one to that. Yes, which does make sense actually. Or would it? Zero to zero? I mean, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Okay. Hmm. 
what am I doing? Two hours in, and I have kind of the basics going on. Okay, I think I'll call it there then with this as it is. The, I have the very basics. I'll need to like flesh this out a little bit more, add try catch, add some tests for the index generator, parsing, and have s and start like moving the data over from this into these files. But that's that's for later. Cheers.